All right. We're going to look at different causes of economic fluctuations. So what we mean here is we can start from a story of we are currently in a long-run equilibrium situation. And what are the two main things that will shift us away from that long-run economic uh, equilibrium situation? Simple, overall, I said LRS will pretty much treat it as put, won't move. So we have really two curves. The two main things that can shift are either going to be something that's going to shift the aggregate demand curve left or right, or something that's going to shift the aggregate supply curve left or right. From then on, we're going to be in the situation that we're no longer on the long run equilibrium, and we're going to have to find a way to move all the way back. So uh, when you go through this process, you have to ask yourself, as any other process that has shifts, listen to the news event and ask yourself, does this event affect aggregate demand or aggregate supply? Well, if it's something that changed consumption, investment, government spending, or exports or imports, it's going to be the AD curve. If it's something that shifted production costs, such as uh, oil or other things like that that relate to production, aggregate supply curve. If it's something that is favorable, it's going to make it shift right. If it's unfavorable, it's going to make things shift left. So an increase in wages is unfavorable for the producers. It's going to make it shift left. An increase in consumption is favorable for demand. It's going to make it shift right. Then once you've established this, as always, always think of the shifts. Think and go through this whole process before you start drawing things out or before you start jumping to conclusions. Have confidence in what you say in point one and two, and then just let it be. Because from then on, you're going to use the diagram of ADS to compare the initial and new equilibrium. And you're going to keep track of the new short run equilibrium and decide how we'll transition to a new long run equilibrium. But essentially here at this third step, you're going to see what's going to happen to the price level. Will it go up or down? And what's going to happen to quantity of output is going to go up or down. Okay, let's go through some examples. The effect of a shift in aggregate demand. So suppose a wave of pessimism overtakes the economy. Uh, what is the macroeconomic impact of such a phenomenon? Well, here it's pretty straightforward. It said that it affects aggregate demand, but like a wave of pessimism overtakes the economy and we could think, well, this is gonna drop investment, but we could also think of other things, but let's just think about it like that. So here, if we look at this, we started over here at point A. This is my initial aggregate demand curve. First stop, there is a decrease in aggregate demand curve. We're going over here to point B. And then from here on out, we're in a recessionary output gap. So in that recessionary output gap, if we go through laissez-faire, we let the economy recover on its own. Over time, the short run aggregate supply curve will shift right because wages will start falling over time so this is what's going to make it shift right and we're going to end up over here where output returns to its natural level so this is the situation of a contraction of agri demand so here i've done it for a contraction of investment potentially but it could be a contraction of consumption contraction of exports contraction of government spending so any of these will be analyzed exactly the same way. There's not a million ways that you can analyze this. So just remember these main ways and the rest will be golden. So a shift in aggregate demand uh, causes fluctuations in the economy's output of goods and services. In the long run, that shift will affect the overall price level, but not necessarily the overall level of output. Policymakers who influence aggregate demand could potentially mitigate the severity of economic fluctuations by driving aggregate demand back up. So when we went down here, we can have the government find a way to stimulate our, our, ourselves back to point A, which we'll talk about more next chapter and a little bit in the next example. So any expansionary aggregate demand shock, uh, this is just an extra example, so an increase in consumption expenditure, now we're moving on the other side. So the AD would shift to the right, would be the opposite as before. We'd move into an inflationary output gap. Over time, wages would go up, which makes the SRAS curve 
shift left, which me leads to a higher price. And once again, I'll put this in change. Okay, so that's for demand shocks. We saw an adverse or negative, adverse and negative. You should treat those as uh, synonyms or positive uh, or expansionary uh, demand shocks. Okay, and in both key these cases, we just looked at what would happen if no government intervention. Shift in aggregate supply. So suppose a firm experiences an increase in their cost of production, such as the price of oil goes up. And I was listening to the radio earlier on, and it's when we think of the price of oil goes up, sometimes we just think about that. But with the price of oil goes up, even though that might be excluded from some parts of inflation calculation, we could also think an increase in the price of transport costs. So your shipping of products may be more expensive. So even if you're not paying for the oil directly, other costs will go up. A lot of costs will trickle up afterwards. What's the macroeconomic impact of such any and the phenomenon. So an increase in the aggregate supply is now an adverse effect on aggregate supply. So aggregate supply here will shift left. So this is our initial impact. So here we're moving to uh, this point here. We were initially at A and we're moving to this point over here. Call it B is what's going on. So an increase in impact. And uh, afterwards, what can happen? Well, policymakers could accommodate and shift us back to aggregate demand, but this is something that we'll analyze more in chapter 15. Otherwise, what would happen over time is that uh, from this point on, eventually we would return to this in initial point. One thing I'll start writing down here is if we have laissez-faire or no government intervention, what I'm less a fair or no government, it's wages that adjust. So it's the AS curve that moves. So here we had the AS curve that moved initially for a change in price of oil through us in the recessionary output gap. Over time, the AS curve would move back because wages would adjust downwards. Here, what they're alluding to is the idea that as uh, this wage is adjust, the government can intervene and accommodate by increasing aggregate demand and we'll see how that works in the next chapter and uh, essentially uh, depending on which outcome happens it's going to be either one or the other so let's say fair as will shift back so this is their example that there was that i just scribbled over is not an example of let's say fair they're having uh, policymakers adopting an expansionary uh, monetary fiscal policy to stimulate aggregate demand. Okay. So that shift in aggregate supply can cause stagflation. Stagflation is over here and it's defined on the other page as an increase in the price level. So compared to the initial point, we have an increase in the price level and a drop in level of output. So we have a stagnating economy and inflation. Policymakers who influence aggregate demand can potentially mitigate the adverse impact on output, slow recovery due to wages being sticky downwards, but only at the cost of exasperating the problem of inflation. So we, if we increase this problem of inflation, because if the government intervenes, we're going to go from one, P1 to P3 to go to this point, which is not something that we necessarily desire. But when it was aggregate demand shocks, um, we can intervene without creating too much inflation because we're initially going back to the initial point. So effects of a shift in aggregate supply, if adverse, that shift in aggregate supply could cause stagflation, which we've just mentioned. Uh, policymakers could uh, do this better. And um, if positive, un un unattended inflationary output gap may lead to a higher than desired inflation levels. Essentially, this slide is just a, a copy of the previous slide, just written slightly differently. So uh, just ignore one of the two and I'll delete one of them. OK, so that's it for Chapter 14. We're looking at macroeconomic equilibrium and we're looking at how the government can intervene in uh, 
uh, or not. And in this, the most focus here was not intervening. In the next chapter, we're going to see that they may want to intervene and what are the main tools that they have access to to intervene. So that's going to be in chapter 15, a very big and important chapter.